Welcome to the St. Michael Advent Meditation Series. My name is Bob Johnston. I will be leading our meditation today. Our theme this Advent is Becoming Together. God calls us to new life each day, and the promise of new life is revealed most profoundly in the birth of Jesus Christ. Together, as we share the good news of God in Christ, we are becoming the people God is calling us to be. In this Advent season, we remember the words of Isaiah. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. A reading from Matthew 23, verses 13 to 26. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you lock people out of the kingdom of heaven. For you do not go in yourselves, and when others are going in, you stop them. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cross sea and land to make a single convert, and you make the new convert twice as much a child of hell as yourselves. Woe to you, blind guides, who say, Whoever swears by the sanctuary is bound by nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the sanctuary is bound by the oath. You blind fools, for which is greater, the gold or the sanctuary that has made the gold sacred? And you say, Whoever swears by the altar is bound by nothing, but whoever swears by the gift that is on the altar is bound by the oath. How blind you are! For which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? So whoever swears by the altar swears by it and by everything on it. And whoever swears by the sanctuary swears by it and by the one who dwells in it. And whoever swears by heaven swears by the throne of God and by the one who is seated upon it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you tithe, mint, dill, and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice, and mercy, and faith. It is these you ought to have practiced without neglecting the others. You blind guides, you strain out a gnat, but swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you clean the outside of the cup and of the plate, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup, so that the outside also may become clean. Here ends the reading. We are continuing our journey in the season of Advent. It's a season that developed to prepare for Christmas and Epiphany. The three main themes include preparing for the coming of Christ in Bethlehem, preparing for Christ's coming at the second coming, and preparing our hearts through repentance. Although that, in that regard, it's not as focused as during Lent. The first two express the hope and expectation for both the first and second coming of Christ. The third is a focus on turning from the things that push us from God. It's on the third one, repentance, that I want to focus on today for our meditation. The passage we read from Matthew 23 is a hard passage, but okay, it's a sign for today. In the passage, Jesus gives his most severe condemnation of the Pharisees and scribes. The scribes and Pharisees, for they look the part. They dress the part. They have phylacteries and big boxes in front of their foreheads containing scriptural verses. Yet inwardly, they have serious issues going on. They have garments with long fringes that they try to tell people that they are very godly. But on the inside, it's a different story. In these difficult passages, Jesus really turns on the heat. Besides exposing their hypocrisy, he pronounces woes upon them. The word woe is a word touching on many emotions. It conveys lament. It conveys sorrow. But it also conveys a sense of wrath and judgment. So Jesus Christ reserves his most severe condemnation for the scribes and the Pharisees. He says seven times in the passage, Woe to you. In this tough passage, I want to look just at a few aspects that can help us on our own spiritual journeys. First, as part of the passage, we may be reminded that we should never put spiritual leaders on a pedestal as if they're perfect or think that they cannot fall or have some spiritual depravity taking place. 
You don't have to be around the church long to know that. Well, that was quick and easy. Uh, But wait, we're not done. We too are leaders. We're all leaders at some level. Our confirmation is in some sense an ordination for lay ministry that calls us into our own place of spiritual leadership. To stand up in places with strength saying, I will follow the way of Christ even if it pushes against what others around me say and do. So then how are we as leaders to respond? Perhaps we need to listen to each woe in this passage carefully. The first woe has to do with locking people out of the kingdom of heaven, really creating barriers or obstacles. Instead of helping the people to God, these religious leaders are actually hindering people. They become the stumbling block. And Jesus goes on to say woe to them because they travel across the sea and the land to make a single proselyte. And yet once he becomes a proselyte, they make them twice as much a child of hell. Wow. It's a reminder that they would go to great lengths to convert people into their group, to belong to their belief system. Yet Jesus is saying that they're actually managed to get them to out-Pharisee a Pharisee. The problem is when you outdo a Pharisee as a Pharisee, you don't get closer to God, you get worse. You get further from God. As we meditate on it, we might ask up front, are we willing to even work to bring people closer to God? And along with that, are we doing things that make barriers? Jesus also goes after them for focusing on little things and missing the big things. They're blind, he says. They'll tithe some of their herbs and mints, but then they miss the big parts, the law, the weightier matters of the law, like justice and mercy and faith. In what ways have we focused on the small things around the church and not the big things that bring life and love and connection with God? Where do we have huge areas of blindness in our own spiritual lives? In the home stretch of this passage, Jesus focuses on how the Pharisees can look righteous on the outside, but on the inside, there's death and rot taking place. Is that us too? One aspect of this season is bringing us back to spending time looking a little harder on what's on the inside, what's off track. Let's reflect on these sayings and the other things that might hold us back in our lives from living more fully in God. One commentator reminds us of this aspect of Advent with the following. Advent is the season to take the barnacles off my Christian bottom the obstacles that keep me from being enthusiastic in my faith and hope and love. Too sophisticated to love God with all my mind and heart, all my soul and strength. Too self-centered to love my sisters and brothers like other selves as Jesus has loved me. Let's pray. Gracious God, as we continue our journey in Advent, we ask that you would not only, not only help us to have hope, of your coming in fullness, but you would help us to see the things that are barriers to others, that you would help us to see the things that are holding us back to being more fully alive in you, and with the help of the Holy Spirit to surrender and move beyond these things. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Please join me as we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.